So my name is Eric Luther. I am vice president of products at CZM Astro. Also help, happen to focus on sales and marketing. So although I have an engineering background, I've made it over to the dark side. <laughs> Any other engineers in the audience? All right, a few friends, thank you. Um, so uh, so if you, a little bit about my history. So uh, my parents like to remind me that I started my first company uh, in 1997. Uh, so I was in high school and I was doing desktop publishing for some small businesses in the area. And I got this wild idea that I needed to be able to open a, a business checking account so I could deposit what I was earning. And so at that time, you couldn't just Google how to start a business. So my parents dropped me off at the local Chamber of Commerce. Uh, it was a small town, so it was pretty easy to get to. Uh, and I figured out all this paperwork I needed to fill out. And I filled it all out. And then I walked across the street to City Hall and I submitted it all. Uh, and then a couple weeks later, I get a, a DBA form, which is doing business as for my, my little company. Uh, and I go down to the bank and I open my checking account and I'm like, I'm real, now I have a business. Uh, and, and that was super rewarding, right? But that is really just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, so since then, right, I graduated, I, I got a double E degree at University of Missouri. Uh, since then, I started a textbook, or co-founded a textbook publishing company focused on engineering education. Uh, if you're a double E or mechanical engineer, you might actually worked with one of the circuits books that I had a chance to publish. Uh, worked with Lego and the Lego Mindstorms NXT, uh, focused on STEM education as well. Uh, then started, I was really excited about the mechanical nature of that, but I'm like, I'm not helping inspire electrical engineers because this moving stuff, just like rocket companies today, they get all the glory, right? Because it's really cool moving parts and I'm a doubly. How do I, how do I help with this uh, area of career growth? Uh, and so ended up develop, designing, defining, and, and launching a student-owned uh, data acquisition device called MyDAC. Uh, and actually, I hired a double E student 10 years after I'd launched this, and he walks into the company I was working at at the time, and he's like, you wouldn't believe what I had to buy today to do a class. <laughs> and I said, uh, maybe I do. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, but, but being able to do circuits at, at home and, and outside the classroom was really a, a cool thing. But spending all of this time on STEM and academic was very rewarding. But I realized that there was a gap in my career, so I wanted to work more on the engineering side. And at the time, there was an opportunity for me to go uh, be a part of a, a, a company we had acquired doing software-defined radio. And so that was really my first foray into focusing more on engineering customers and utilizing my engineering degree, not just to inspire others to be engineers, but also to contribute to industry and, and to serve others from an industry capacity. And so, uh, so if you look at where, where I'm at today, I'm at uh, Cesium Astro. Um, you know, I, I do product strategy, I do sales, and I do marketing. And although all of these past experiences seem like they're disaggregated uh, in a lot of different ways, uh, just like we heard earlier, all of those experiences have an incredible amount of transferable skills that all give you different backgrounds. I figured out how to set up a sales channel through bookstores and use Amazon and sell products on Amazon. I set up and figured out how to finance that effort because it's really expensive to, to print a textbook and not actually know whether you're gonna be able to sell any of them and pay off all of the debt that you've, you've incurred. Uh, you know, we worked through all kinds of issues when we were developing hardware and handing hardware to students in classrooms. So I had to run beta testing. Uh, one of the beta tests I did with this student device is we, we, we gave them to 100 students in a classroom, and then I went back a month later and polled all of these students on, you know, what did you like about that experience? What did you not like about the experience? And the number one piece of feedback I got from this hands-on learning device was, the screwdrivers at Walgreens, they don't stock enough for all of us to go there. So we had to go to Walgreens, CVS, and Walmart to get the glasses screwdriver that's small enough to fit into the little place where the wire connects on your device. 
I said, well, the lesson there is I probably should put a screwdriver in the box, right? <laughs> so that they can focus on education and not actually tracking down tools. Uh, so, so all of these little pieces add up to a lot of really incredible experiences. And, and there's all of these problems that you're trying to solve. Uh, and another fact about engineering school is all of the problems I did as, as a young engineer, all the way through school, somebody else had already solved, right? It was a homework problem, it was a test, it was some lab assignment. You know, I could almost like just push buttons on whatever the paper said and not learn anything and get to the end. And it almost didn't matter whether I got to the right answer or not because I knew there was a right answer. And then you get out into the real world and you realize it's not like that at all. Like these problems may not have right answers. Things that people are trying to do may actually violate the laws of physics, which is kind of a hard thing to violate. Uh, you, you can't even have enough money a lot of times to overcome physics. So. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of an important thing to understand. And so you, you start to look at these problems, and then you have to figure out how to break them down. Now at Cesium Astro, I threw this slide up just so you could see some of the things we're trying to solve. Some of them, there are solutions today, and we have ideas on how we can improve them. Others are just now being contemplated. You know, we talked about lunar communications in, in the first session. And so as we look at these, taking all of that background and this engineering knowledge and applying to these new set of problems is, is where I spend a lot of my time today. And I'm looking at both the mission goal, but then also the systems and then the components that will be put together in order to, to accomplish that mission in the future. In some cases, I'm just focused on some component that's really down in the weeds that I can offer as, as a product that can be purchased. Other times, I'm actually focused on, on the mission. Sometimes it's the software in between them that connect them. But at the end of the day, the, the mission is really the driving factor. And so where I spend most of my time is at this intersection of technology, applications, and then the actual user that's gonna benefit from what you're trying to accomplish. And as an engineer, it's really easy to go run off and look at all of this really cool technology and leave all of your users and the applications in the dust. And sometimes there's technology that you need to pull into this intersection. Uh, and and it, it takes skill and it takes a lot of effort to recognize those things as well. But then there are other times when the application and the user aspect, so you've got a sales team that's going off and they're making all kinds of crazy promises and they leave the technology behind. And you need to reel them back in because you need to make sure that the promises that you're making you can actually accomplish. And in order to run a business, you typically have a time frame in which those things need to be accomplished in or it's not particularly useful. And so I'm continually pulling everybody kind of back into that circle as I look and build roadmaps on what's gonna happen now, what's gonna happen a few years from now. And that engineering degree is really critical and I still use a lot of, of my technology background but also get to pull in all of these other experiences that I didn't even know I was developing when I was in high school doing desktop publishing, Photoshop and, and, and things like that. So what do I do on my day-to-day? -day? So my day-to-day, -day, you know, everybody thinks about, oh, I'm gonna start a company or I have an idea. Let's build the widget or the product or, or whatever it is. And that really falls into this develop and manufacturing block that I have up here, right? Well, you need people to actually use that thing that you made. So you need a way for them to buy it, right? I put uh, textbooks on Amazon. I've, you know, you have to build up what, what's called a sales channel. So you need a channel so that people can learn about your product marketing. You need them to be able to buy it, which is sales. And then the most important thing for me and, and the thing I get the most enjoyment out of is helping those customers be successful. And so that mission success for me is really where I'm trying to get to and, and that's the most rewarding thing. And then you take those successes, throw them back into the beginning and you actually start to do a, a little bit of market research. Maybe there are other markets I can serve and then build out roadmaps because no product is perfect and as it begins to be used, you need to iterate on that, uh, typically in some cases very quickly <laughs> if you've got issues that you need to solve. 
but also add new features or new capability or different variations. Turns out almost every market starts out with one solution. And it looks like it is the Swiss Army knife and it is going to solve every problem and there is no need for something else. And then all of a sudden you realize that, oh, well, I need a version that's, uh, 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 you know, steak knife is great and if, I, if that's all I had, I could make it work for a lot of things. But then you, you walk into a, a formal dining experience and you're like, there is a butter knife, there is a steak knife, there is this other knife, and I don't even know what it's for. But, but these markets all end up diversifying. And getting in and really understanding the different problem sets is what it means for a market to continue to mature. So whether it's you know, communication on the moon, like we heard about earlier, uh, you look at traditional wireless, I would say, oh, well, I just need to be able to connect my phone to the internet. What do you mean there's cellular and Wi-Fi and near-field communications, and now you're talking about putting satellites that are just gonna do the same thing? The answer is no. There's actually a real need for these different layers of, of connectivity, for these different layers of technology. But until you start solving problems in an area, you never start to understand those subtleties, start delivering incremental value, and then the market continues to grow as you serve more people and, and more applications. Um, but again, it all comes down to the mission success. So, so I've, I've been employee number, I guess the first uh, big company I was at, I was probably employee number 4,000. Uh, I've been employee number one. Uh, I've been employee number eight. Uh, I've done the whole work for a big company. I've done the uh, work in like angel investment, but very organic growth. Uh, and I've done the work for a company that's gone and, and received VC funding. And I think one of the areas that's most exciting and rewarding for me is really this early stage company. You have some ideas of roadmap, you have some ideas of, of, of funding and what they call runway, but you're still in this exponential growth opportunity phase where you're working with small collaborative teams, you're trying to solve really pointed problems, uh, you, know, you have ownership over your work, it's light on policies and heavy on employee trust and, and ownership of what you're doing. This opportunity to fail fast is actually real. Uh, you can fail and recover and move on to the next stage. Part of that has to do with the way the company is managed. Another part of that has to do with uh, the, the size of the company and, and that flexibility as well. Um, but really having this, again, uh, impact on the mission, impact on your customer that is, is changing their life, right? That is the part uh, that, that is, is a lot of fun. So in conclusion, uh, this whole idea of connectivity, right? Anytime you're trying to load up a map or send a text message and it's not going through, you realize even something as mature as connectivity is not solved. There are still incremental things that need to be done to enhance that market, even here on Earth. Imagine how much opportunity there is in low Earth orbit and uh, lunar missions and, and even deep space to enhance uh, even, even connectivity as an application set. Significant contributions can be made at all levels of the company. And especially at these early stage companies, every employee's time, effort, and impact is felt across the entire organization. And that is, for me, is also really exciting because we are a team and we're working together and everything that's done and all of the, the things that people sign up for, like they really are the owner of that activity. And, and if they need help, they just ask for it but that follow through and real sense of ownership is, is really key. Uh, and the last thing I'll leave you with is the other cool thing about working in an early stage company is as you design things, as you build things, you own it from the very beginning all the way through the process. We're in phases where we're designing things at Cesium Astro. You literally walk across the street and they're being cut on uh, a mill the, the same day and you're starting to hold the things in your hand that were just being laid out in CAD a few hours ago. 
And it's really an incredible experience to have that end-to-end -end ownership that's challenging to get in a really large organization. So with that, uh, excited to be able to join you guys here at, at SGX uh, and uh, you know, encourage you to, to enhance your engineering skills, but also understand that all of the things you've done, even in high school or outside experiences, are all giving you additional skills that you can leverage in, in any position you pursue at, at almost any company, and frankly, in almost any industry. Uh, but space is a pretty incredible place to be, so thank you.